What's up YouTube? What's up followers? What's up haters? I know you're watching. So one more time, uh, bring in another crazy video. Uh, this time another type of monster. This is the Heinkel HG111, the Schwillig or Twin. So these dudes decided to create an aircraft that could uh, pull the Messerschmitt 321. It was a huge cargo glider. So they were like, how the hell do we tow this damn big plane? Uh, the Messerschmitt had no engines in the beginning, so they needed um, a tow plane. After a few tests, they decided to join these two Heinkels by the wings, and they nicknamed it the, the Twin, because they were two planes attached. They added a fifth engine in the center, so uh, it was a total of five engines. Five Jumos, two Elevens, uh, and that was completing a total of 7,500 horsepower. That's a lot of juice for for air power. So this is how they decided to do this stuff. Um, one more time, they do not sell this plane on 132nd in any brand. So I thought, how can I get across a Zvillig? I decided to make it myself. So this is the project. I chose the two pro modelers by Revel, the Heinkel. So I found a website. They sell the, the center section. Um, I didn't kind of like it. It's first of all, it's like a hundred bucks, 90, 90 something dollars plus shipping and tax and all that crap. And the center section, it's a hundred percent solid resin. So go figure. Imagine the, the weight on that thing. And the landing gear on these planes, the 132nd um, Pro Modelers, is really not that good. It's a little weak for my taste, so that's already asking for trouble, you know. Uh, that landing gear is going to be breaking the whole time, too much weight and too expensive. So I said, screw it, I'm going to make my own. So I'm going to go through this uh, again. It's a video slash slideshow. There's a lot of pictures. There's a few videos of me showing what's going on. Um, everything you have to do in this plane, you have to do double. I ended up spending a little bit of uh, more money than usual because you get a PE set for one side, you have to get the PE set for the other side as well. So everything's double. Um, I ended up seeing double for a few months after finishing this damn thing. I decided on one of the fuselages to leave it open so you can see all the interior, the detail, uh, the radio compartment on the back, a little bit of the bomb compartment, which will be empty, by the way, in this build, since uh, this is the Schwelig, it's a tow plane. So um, this is it. Um, the other fuselage will be closed. Um, both fuselages will have a detailed cabin, and um, I will be showing you and explaining the process as we go through the video. So welcome guys, thank you, and let's jump on it. So I decided to grab um, Styrene, these little C channels, they're very tiny, um, solid square tubing, and solid uh, I-beam channel. So I started drilling this, why? Because I am recreating the beams inside the fuselage, the ones that go round uh, across the, the, the interior. Um, these planes are really, well, the actual model, they are pretty okay with detail, but they don't go as far as showing um, the whole internal structure. So I decided to, to add that uh, effect. Um, I added parts as always from another um, models. They well, I actually used a book this time. I went through a lot of reference pictures. Uh, the book that I got is really, really uh, detailed. It's kind of like a walk around. So they they show you the wings, the landing gear, engine, the different types of engines. These the uh, HE one elevens uh, had different versions of the Jumo. Uh, the Jumo is an inverted V12, so you will find the valve covers on the bottom and the crankshaft set up on the top. I know, it's pretty weird. 
so here we have a, a little bit of the interior i am doing you know chipping uh weathering these are the the beams that i'm telling you that go across the whole internal belly of the plane actually throughout the whole fuselage you can find it in the in the belly you can find it in the mid section as well as in front of the cabin this uh this model that i built uh is not showing any wings uh interior so you will not see um, any of this inside except for where the engine is exposed uh, one more time this airplane has five engines and of course you know the the two models that i use only bring four so i ended up getting the jumo out of a stuka i bought it on ebay i decided to go with the reference pictures of my book and kind of like uh, simulate how they uh, wire, plumb, everything, uh, the Jumo and the Heinkel. So that was my fifth engine. I decided to leave one open. So everything uh, that has to do with the uh, electronics, uh, fuel lines, hydraulics, all that stuff, it's exposed on one of the wings. Um, the center section, I will show you guys down the road on the, on the video. So the center section, I ended up fabricating it myself with the leftover of the two wings that you're not going to use since the planes are going to be joined. So um, it was a little bit difficult since uh, all the panel lines run one way and because of the wings are angled and they're going to reducing not only the, the thickness of the wing, but the shape of the wing, it's like a diagonal. So... It was a little tricky this is uh, the interior uh, all the parts the radio parts communication oxygen tanks a little bit of ammo i decided to add uh, the gun turret uh, chairs or little seats that these guys have it's mostly just like a little two structure with uh, uh, leather on the bottom so you can see it i did uh, a lot of uh, sponge chipping so you'll see in, in the interior all this aluminum chipping for uh, parts you know that have a lot of contact with either uh, the crew or or whatever. Um, here you can see the fuselages. I am working on the PE, adding all of the PE again. Everything's double. So what I was doing for one cabin, I was doing for the other. I was reading that uh, some of these versions, they were actually thinking on making this building. Uh, the reason why they wanted to perhaps make it a bomber in the future, it never got to that point. It was the, the huge range that it had. These guys could pack a lot of fuel inside these planes. And the power of the engine, you know, five Jumo engines, uh, the whole plane by itself, it was a very long range. So they were seriously thinking on making it a bomber, but he never got to that. So that's a little bit of a uh, uh, quick fact. More of my interior fuselages, adding more brackets. Everything has to be dimple dyed. So again, one of the fuselages will be exposed from the from the top, uh, kind of like you remove the roof, and the other fuselage will be just closed. Uh, my idea with the model is one of them exposing everything, and the other one is just closed, showing how the the plane looks 100% closed. And I like the shape of this plane; it's pretty weird, but I kind of like it. Now that I'm looking at this whole interior section, um, next time I'm definitely <laughs> trying to add some lights. There's a lot of detail that 
in the end it gets uh, lost you you really cannot see all the way in to to appreciate the, the wiring cables brackets and all that stuff so next time definitely I am adding lights on my on my build if I go as crazy as this a lot of beams those are the beams that I am uh, telling you that that run across the, the whole fuselage internally <clears throat> here's uh, one of the cabins already installed this is uh, a lot of mock-up to to clear because um, I did a lot of the stuff inside the glass as well um, it was a pain in the ass to do the, all the glass of the cabin because I painted inside the same gray that I painted the whole interior and outside of course it has to follow the camouflage of the plane so dual, dual masking on the calves fire extinguishers, a little bit of the ammo box. Um, I made the machine guns, I flared the little tubes. That way uh, it simulates the, what is it, the MG machine gun. So this is the center section. I can show you guys here. Um, as you can see, those are the wings cut. I started to build my, my center section that way. I casted my own uh, fifth engine, which is the one I'm showing you here. This material is milliput. I ended up making a copy out of one wing and creating my mold and then molding the positive or the actual part that I was going to use. Um, I ended up casting a bunch of parts. Uh, it was a little difficult since uh, they had to look <laughs> exactly the same. So a lot of sanding internally inside the wings uh, of course these kits uh, are 132 they're huge um, they do not come designed to be glued like uh, like I did you know from the wings so the weight will crack the center often so I decided to add uh, those brass structures so this is true metal as you can see is that little I think it's a quarter inch brass tubing square tubing so I JV welded or uh, epoxy, two, two part epoxy, part A, part B, you mix it and it becomes like solid rock. So this is what I ended up using for, to actually uh, secure my plane and make it a, <laughs> as strong as I could because there is no way just plastic will hold this weight. Uh, the wingspan, it ended up measuring 47 inches long. So that's a huge freaking plane. I gave it a day uh, for all this crap to be dry. And it again, this you can tell the Tamiya <laughs> can in reference to the, to the size of the plane. I made more uh, structures. Here we finally jumped to work on the plane. This is the Jumo engine uh, one more time. This is a V12 inverted so the crankshaft will be positioned on the top and the two valve covers on the bottom i'm pretty sure damn sure there's a reason why the germans decided to design this plane this engine like that so um i did the welds on the exhaust so it's two four six ten ten exhausts and i did the weld on every single one header I casted my own uh, parts, uh, radiators, all that stuff, so I could add it on the fifth engine. This is the blue, blue tacky stuff, the one for making, the one for making molds. This is the, the mold that I um, actually ended up making. Here I'm cutting, this is what I was explaining. Uh, so you can see the panel lines don't meet 
don't uh, don't match or add up to the rest so yeah you have to sand them down and then redo your your whole paneling on that section it was it was fun a lot of prepping uh, a lot of parts it's very easy to get confused because it's the the center section you have to work on that then get all the parts to create that uh center engine by the way um on a regular heinkel if you're looking at the fuselage each engine has an incline so they are kind of like inclined in meaning uh, they follow the wings uh, because the wings, as soon as they separate from the fuselage, they go towards the engine. Once they hit the engine, they go up to the tips. So the engines are tilted in. Um, when you have two Heinkels together, each fuselage has its uh, motors tilted in. But the center one, which is just a straight wing, uh, the center has to be perfectly straight. So... It was tricky to to cast my parts and at the same time uh, shape them down to have a straight motor and and the whole aerodynamic shape on the back has to be straight uh, not inclined so i'll be explaining that in a bit was it a nightmare Fuck yeah, this plane really kicked my ass. It was very, it doesn't look as difficult as it is, but just maneuvering the damn thing um, down the road, I will explain, is the first time I paint or airbrush separate parts. Um, I thought about it and I was like, there is no way I'm gonna be able to camouflage this huge damn plane uh, once it's, uh, built or, or or you know uh, put together so i decided to paint one fuselage then the second one and then the wing section that was the only way i could find to to really uh get away with this so this is the bottom part this is uh the bottom section that i did another casting and um again remember yeah it looks rough it looks stupid at this point but it's a lot of sanding and sanding and, and reshaping in order to make it flat a lot of work i went uh with really deta uh, small details you can tell uh you can see that I use very small hardware. <laughs> These are uh, resin bolts. So I did the little drills, I drilled the holes, I used those little drills and I added bolts in every single corner. Whatever I saw on the reference pictures, I added a bolt. I also, looking at uh, a lot of those pictures, the Heinkel opens one of the side windows. It's not usually that they open it apparently it's kind of like a service window or something that they need to open whenever they're uh, working on the engine i'm sorry on the aircraft on the cockpit so i decided to leave one of those open to show the um all the detail inside here's what i was telling you i am masking inside of the of all of the the clear parts because i'm going to paint them gray as uh, part, you see, here's the, the gray part, as how the, the rest of the plane is on the inside. And then I have to remask the outside just to kind of like match the camouflage. So it was double masking for this. These are the tiny bolts. Freaking tiny. You can see a little bit more of the construct on the center um, I decided to add more and more and more uh, putty there's a lot of putty to be used in this thing um, I didn't want to go with uh, milliput to fill up my my areas since milliput again is very heavy so I wanted to stay away from anything heavy because the landing gears are, are the weak point on these planes 
Um, here you can see I'm lining up with the two motors that the kit brings. I'm lining up my, my center motor. So everything has to be lined up perfectly, rulers, whatever you can use to, to line it up. Measurements, measurements, and more measurements. Otherwise, it's very easy to get it wrong. Again, uh, you have to do a whole lineup of engines and what's going to go where, otherwise it's very easy to get confused. Here's all the putty I was talking about, beginning to, to shape and kind of like mold it in. And this is just the center section. We still have to work with the outer wings and then blending in the fuselages, a lot of fun. Assembling the fuselages, nothing out of the ordinary here, other than getting your seam lines and your joints uh, very, very well um, worked. Here's the first primer color, or this is going to be the base. Uh, my camouflage. So the camouflage that I decided to use is the two greens that they use the dark green and the black green so i found online a um very unique camouflage that i freaking liked um this is the pattern of the two greens that they used on top instead of using the kind of like that splinter that with straight edges i ended up using this one and then on top of that uh it's gonna have a uh, another white camo um, how they were using uh, white to disguise them in snow so um, you'll see down the road how it looks uh, with with the white one this is all freehand by the way it was very uh, interesting and difficult to to get the perfect uh, <laughs> shape and, and pattern so it looks good it's very easy to mess it up especially with the type of camel that I did and everything everything is freehand um, my wrist and my elbow, my fingers, my thumb <laughs> were all hurting for for a long time. It's a lot of airbrushing. Here's a picture of uh, of the white camel. So that's the one I decided to do. Came out. It didn't come out bad. Mm -hmm. So when I did. So when I did the white camo, unfortunately, I had a lot of uh, overspray and unfortunately the overspray killed my other section or my other camo, the one that was previously there. So I ended up going over again with the greens. So in theory, I painted this plane like five times. <laughs> it had to be done. It had to be done. Otherwise it looked way too too bad it wasn't cutting it to to my taste so i had to do what i had to do The Pitot tube, I decided to not use the plastic one, it looks ugly, so I made my own metal part. I ended up using um, the thin aluminum tube, also brass, and I shaped the corners round, so it kind of like matched the ones that I saw in the pictures. Here's um, the, the flaps that I've been cutting and reshaping so they can follow the, the, the wing line. 
on the section that, that, that I built. Here you can see the center. This is the belly of the center section. The, that motor, that whole section, this whole section that you're seeing has to be 100% flat. Um, it's, it doesn't have any kind of incline like the other engines. More work on the motor, engine. That's the little part I casted the radiator on top. That's the part I casted from the other ones. Weathering, the front propeller. By the way, the fifth engine, I decided to do the propeller because it's not gonna have the front cone I forgot the name of that cone uh, on the propeller, but um, I decided not to add that, so it's kind of like showing the, the internals of the propeller. Those I made with uh, true metal, um, aluminum tubing, so I cut it and drill, drill it. I'll show it to you down the road. So the reason why I added this uh, rod in the front, I am aligning all the uh, engines when I add my fifth motor because it's going to be exposed I don't have like a reference point so I decided to add this tube you can see here that uh, it's perfectly aligned with the other ones that way when you see the plane from a side everything will be perfect and straight everything will be true um, also the part that I was mentioning the, the front part is uh, metal it's all aluminum tubing that I cut uh, did a little groove and then uh, drilled it. I still have to finish the inside part of the wing, all those structures with the holes, uh, all the wiring, plumbing, it's it's a mess on the pictures, it looks uh, on the reference pictures. So this is the angle that I was talking about, this side of the, you see this one straight, the center engine needs to be perfectly straight and then the side engines they have that angle or that incline like leaning towards the fuselage this is leaning towards the other side you can see the exhaust one is lifted more than the other one so the one that i was adding you see i had to add the same angle so one valve cover is sitting higher than the other one and that's how i achieved my um, my angle with a perfect uh, incline a lot of measuring again guys uh, measuring and testing and taking and it's it's fun this is the center um, flap that I was talking about um, I was missing one section so I'm going to make it out of uh, styrene and just uh, follow the, the angle and the shape of the other flaps. This is the kind of build that everything sounds fun <laughs> when you're thinking about it. But once you're in and then you're sanding, cutting, measuring, it gets frustrating sometimes. So. If you're going to try something like this, guys, definitely you have to be sure of what you're doing because halfway there, you're going to be like, fuck, what did I get myself into? But, you know, it's part of modeling. It's part of our hobby and it's part of creating awesome shit. So come on, go for it. Now the center part, it's 100% uh, smooth. Just you can see just certain sections that I was... Uh, kind of like retouching with uh, putty. By the way, I tried Mr. Mr. Hobby's putty. It's really damn good, by the way. If you guys want to give it a try, whenever you guys can, uh, buy some, whether you use it on cars, uh, planes, tanks, it, it's very good. I will have to say that it's maybe even better than Tamiya's uh, putty, the white putty. work 
center uh, center motor is installed that way um, everything's smooth when when you sand it everything's smooth everything sanded uh, in, 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 in a perfect shape it's not like you're adding parts later sometimes uh, some of these you have to sand them, sand them out because the, then the wings interfere you cannot get the sanding paper and it was a little I added one and I learned from one so I started working on the little motors outside and then just installing them so I so you all you have to do is work with one seam line here's more of the exposed engine a lot of wiring a lot of plumbing a lot of microscopic um, decals It's, uh, it's crazy how the engine mounts are behind the engine. Um, they have like a tube structure that, that holds the Jumo. And then those two side structures run and, and kind of like clap the engine from the sides of the block. Um, I was looking in the pictures on the reference shots. And they added some kind of like structures. And that's where they sit the panels at the end when they cover the engines. With those fasteners so because I was not gonna use panels I thought crap I have to make my own so this is why you're seeing this round part on the front it's like kind of like a like a structure they used and down the road you'll see that I added the side um, kind of like rails with holes and that's where they will uh, bolt on their panels one more time my doesn't have the panel so everything's exposed it's, it's showing those uh, those structures more tubing more plumbing more wiring and definitely weathering because once the engines installed it's gonna be way too hard to work uh, on certain areas so I decided to work on the engine outside and then just install it and finish it This is a close-up of the propeller, all metal. So, by the way, um, when I finished uh, the aircraft, I went to, what was the first show? So the first show I got it to was a um, Best of the West. That's uh, in Vegas. Uh, great show, by the way, guys. If you guys can ever visit that show, totally recommend it. Um, it did well. Uh, it did uh, Best Aircraft of the show. Um, you know, it's, it's something that you don't, commonly see I know we all like to build you know out of the box and then add our own details but this I went a little way too crazy with it you know um, adding the two big planes and adding all this detail just the camouflage was a pain in. by the way I apologize you can see the you can see the pictures on the background that's the the book I was using for for reference so again uh the first show that it uh that it made it to it was best of the west it was really good i got another after that um another best aircraft so it's it's been doing pretty good a few first places it's it's has it's gotten some good acceptance A 
could use my caliper to kind of like copy where the rivets are going to be all the rivet holes and and actually the 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 hardware holes you can see that the two fuselages are already camouflaged and the center wings are just barely starting uh, to get painted so um, again I ended up doing a base color on the wings then doing the dark or the black green camouflage and then the white on top so in the end um, what I ended up doing once you glue the the fuselage to the wings now you have to reconnect but first you have to sand and blend in the fuselages you know with your um, putty and all that stuff without hurting the camouflage too much so that was another tricky part um, also you cannot apply too much force to the plastic because it begins to crack remember it's a very heavy plane since we added a bunch of shit so over here you can see the the, the fuselage kind of like sitting in between the wings so that's the part you have to blend in and then connect the camouflage again so three colors it's fun Here's a full picture with uh, the, the first camouflage on the wings. Damn big plane. The bottom was another fun part. I had to make where the, where the exhaust burned the wings. Um, you have to, the five engines have to match that color. So it was fun trying to achieve that too one side of the belly is uh, closed like i said one fuselage is completely closed and the other side is open and this is the overspray i was uh, telling you about i could not fix my freaking paint to to come out smooth i tried different um quantities of, of reducer by the way i shot this with tamiya and everything was spraying perfect except the white i don't know i i changed the psi i moved the nozzle i did left and right and it was an, an iwata by the way so here i started retouching the the colors to get rid of that white overspray um, as you can see some parts are worked on some others are not you can tell the difference be, between how bad the, the white overspray looks Achieving that white all those swirls and, and, and that pattern was also a little bit difficult especially in such a big plane You know your your hand kind of like gets tired and now you don't know where to to take the pattern And all of a sudden you do a, one of the sides too big So you have to add green to kind of like reduce it. it It's very tricky and everything's freehand remember This is everything painted, except it's not glued yet. So that that section needs to be, you know, sanded down uh, the the joints. More on the bottom. Also, um, the weathering was super tricky as well. I had to weather most of the bottom part without it being assembled otherwise there is no way you can weather this plane with detail being so big uh, at, at one point I to, to finish some details there was no nowhere I can put the plane so I ended up putting it in my bed under pillows that was the only way to not hurt the engine and still have the the ability to turn it around and, and work in different areas it's, it's just uh, way too big you can still see here the big joint so that has to be covered with putty and then the camouflage connected
So here's the weathering I was mentioning. Um, like I said, I had to weather the plane also uh, in sections. And then once I worked at uh, the parts that I had to join with uh, white putty and all that stuff, you have to airbrush it, rescribe it, uh, kind of like do the, the gloss, weather it, then flat, weather it, then cover it with flat again. So it was very tricky. You have to really plan ahead for for one uh, for one build like this like this big. It's just too many variables, you know, happening together. This is the belly part that um, that has to be joined. You can see everything's painted, so you have to go and and do uh, uh, do over again. He, this is the wing already uh, painted. You can see that I started with green, so there's overspray in in the rest of it. So I have to connect every pattern of the camouflage again, from the fuselage to the wings. Um, you can see it's a scribe. So once it's uh, repainted, re-airbrushed, then you have to weather it again. Do the panel lines, etc. This is the the wash, the black wash for the for the panel lines. The camouflage is already connected here. You can tell that it's fresh. So a little bit of weathering and it will blend everything in. Here I am finally adding the, the flat part. Uh, because the area is so big, I didn't want to airbrush. I just ended up using um, Mr. Clear flat. Amazing product, by the way. I am definitely going to be buying more Mr. Hobby uh, parts, Mr. Hobby products, they are really good. They sit perfect, they dry uh, amazing, uh, it's super thin, you can barely see any any material on top of your, your work. You can tell here how difficult it is to to work with the size of that plane. I I broke so many parts and, and had to re-glue them and be so careful with corners, uh, scratching the paint, uh, little you know the the pins everywhere. It was it was tough. can see the the size of the wingspan of this thing <laughs> here's the belly also spraying it with flat uh, re-weathering the corners and here I have to paint uh, the burn marks from from the exhaust so I started to to kind of like plan where I was going to airbrush them and then uh, complete them with uh, dry pastels or pigments. So now that everything's flattened, back to normal. Uh, the removing part, this is the fun part, saying hoping that you did not get any overspray inside your, your detail work because there's a lot of detail inside the cabin, a lot of wiring. A little bit of overspray and it'll be a tons of work so luckily uh, my masking was really good I had almost zero overspray inside well inside the actual cabin it was none it was actually a little bit of bleed that I have in, in a couple of corners so I ended up kind of like cleaning that uh, bleed Here, um, by the way, here I fucked up. 
I was not supposed to move this part since that's going to be glued. Um, the reason why the guns, the, actually the bomb sites. So the the guy in charge of dropping the bombs, he has this uh, device in the front, in the nose, which is the, the, the bomb site. So it's kind of like this device they use to calculate the, you know, the speed, angle, uh, altitude, all these, you know, um, different data that they have to go through in order to be precise and drop the bombs. Since this plane was not a bomber, it was a tow plane, they removed those from the nose. So I ended up uh, doing the, the whole delete in the front and I added a plate on, on the bottom. So that's why you're not supposed to, to remove that section because it's supposed to be glued because of that uh, delete plate that I added and, and I forgot about it, but you know, no big deal. Removing all the masking, I didn't get any, any overspray inside here as well, so that was good. And by the way, this is what I used to, to do removable parts. I used this, the blue tacky stuff. It's by uh, Loctite, that's the brand. It's very easy to remove later. So this is the part that I was selling you. To do all those uh, tiny touch-ups and all that stuff, I ended up using a pillow so you don't hurt the bottom of the engine. And um, this is my freaking bed. <laughs> um, you can you just move the pillow around and the plane moves, but you know it's on a soft area, so so you don't mess anything up. A lot of little details that have to be done on this thing and everything multiply by two and if you're working on the engines multiply it by five all the the rust on the exhaust had to be done 10 times everything it gets it gets you know a little tedious all those oil leaks weathering uh all that you know um paint chipping so the aluminum part and all that stuff you can see here uh, it's a closer look Here's the cabin again inside already assembled. That part of the uh, exposed wing inside where the engine sits. Here's the part that I'm saying all these wires are hanging out. Those are the ones I have to fish through. At the same time that I'm gluing the clear part, these wires have to go behind uh, the control panel. Here's the control panel hanging and I'm wiring, I'm fishing and wiring those uh, damn cables <laughs> and with the two uh, fire extinguishers on top too. Landing gears, damn landing gears. It was really difficult because once again, remember that you're fabricating such a large area. Now the problem is you have to make the four tires in the front plus the two in the back they all have to touch the floor that way you don't have you know any floating tire or you will be immediately disqualified from any show you take the engine because you know it doesn't it doesn't line up so my logic was i'm going to of course the the tires on the back on the tail they're already there because you cannot build a plane without those tires being in so I made the, the, the rear tires touch the, the, the flat part or the, my flat base and then I added the two outmost tires on the wings. So now I just get to play with the center one so that way you know all of the tires will be touching uh, the center. Plus you have to 
flatten them on the bottom to make them look flat, you know, like the real stuff. Um, after everything was glued, after everything was done nice, then it's the weathering part. I went highly detailed also on the on the tires, the landing gears. They all have their own brake uh, plumbing, um, the, the tubes, brackets, everything holding them. Uh, all the bolts they're there so everywhere you see there's an actual little microscopic bolt that resembles how the plane was put together it's uh it's very easy when when you have reference pictures you can you can go exactly on, on how the plane was so here the plane is sitting on its own the the front side of the cabin is already sitting in Now adding the final touches, antennas, the pitot tube that I made. And this is the final result. Um, I will apologize because <laughs> I cannot take pictures of this thing with a white background. I, I tried it using like a, like a cover sheet. It was so difficult. The plane is so big, I cannot fit it anywhere to, to get the pictures taken. But um, eventually I'll make a, a nice photo shoot and add it. For now, this is it, guys. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I always appreciate your comments. Uh, comments you guys make on Facebook. The comments you guys make, uh, you know, whenever we're at the show. Uh, Instagram. Everywhere I post my stuff. I am very, very uh, thankful for, for your support, guys. Everyone, every single one of you make my day. Um, I decided to open a Patreon, by the way. Uh, so it's www.patreon slash scalefreaks. I am trying to give back a little bit since, um, yeah, there's a lot of people asking how I do my wiring. What do I use for these? What do I use for that? So I am definitely wanting to, to, to throw um, a bunch of videos showing all that stuff. So please check out my Patreon. I am starting. I will be um, throwing some content there as well. 
please let me know what would you like to see on my Patreon. I will definitely uh, work towards that. And uh, again, thank you. Please like my videos, share, follow, um, comment. It helps a lot. It does a, a huge difference with the uh, stupid algorithms and all that shit, you know? So this is my YouTube. Visit me on Instagram. I have the, my two pages, Danval Models and Scale Freaks. They're both mine. I'm always there. I'm always happy to answer your, your questions or comments or thoughts. All right, gentlemen and ladies, have a great one. I'll see you soon.